Artists work on many projects at the same time, that's why often we leave sketches behind. Some are never meant to be finished, while with others we had some ideas, but they just ultimately end up forgotten. In today's video, I'm gonna revisit four of mine that have been collecting dust for way too long and give them life. I'll just pick this one first. The first sketch actually has a bit of backstory, I'll tell you real quick. In one of my dreams, I think I saw this in a poster or something like that, then woke up thinking that was a great visual, so I sketched it and there it is. I remember the colors were basically just white and blue with a dark grey sort of grunge background. It was like this guy in an alleyway full of abandoned stuff. Also, the colors looked really boring how I had seen them in my sleep, so I added some highlights cause the sun's awesome and makes things look better. Who would've thought that my mind awake is better than my mind sleeping? No matter how many references I'm using, creating a background is always kinda hard. I don't find it that difficult when it's either drawing from a photo or making a clean background, but trying to make something messy look natural is harder than it seems at first. I'm just like, what do I put in here? It also doesn't help that every time when you start blocking it looks bad, so you just have to keep going and believe that in the end it will look good. Well, now let you be the judge of that. The second sketch is pretty simple and the most unfinished, which actually made it hard to land on what I wanted it to be. But eventually after redrawing the head a million times and using a lot of references, I got this. For how incomplete the sketch was, it's a bit strange that I already had the colors in mind, black with pink details, but decided to change it because I think a dark blue makes it a more interesting color palette. I'm fond of how the shading came out, because even though it's simple, it still conveys different textures for each part. Didn't have any ideas for a background, but also didn't want it empty, so I made this outline turning into a wavy pattern thing. Now to the third sketch. This is one of those which I have a pretty clear idea of how I want it to turn out, and how it would differentiate itself from my other drawings. If you spend any time online looking at art, it's hard to miss the influence that these aesthetic trends have on today's art. Even then, that's something I don't really do in mind often, because if it isn't done right, I feel like they can just make all drawings look and feel the same. But you know, by taking this risk, experimenting and adding my own spin to these ideas, I may be able to create something that stands out in its own unique way. That's just my way of saying that I'll do whatever I feel like and use the rules as a very loose guideline. So I'll do just that and who knows? maybe something good will come out of it. The main things that deviated from my original idea were that I first planned to make the pinks and blues more pastel, but I think this way gives it more contrast. Also I end up doing these types of shadows, don't know the name, just know they look pretty cool. They make it more three-dimensional while keeping it looking like cell shading. Quick explanation of what cell shading is. This is a cell, a see-through sheet where animations were made back in the day, because of the medium's limitations and also to make the animation process easier since I had a lot of frames to make, when coloring that would either be only flat colors or a little bit of shading, mostly limited to hard edge shadows. That style became known as cell shading. Even though technology has evolved so much since then, the cell shading style is still used but complemented on in the making of 2D animation and also was adopted by 3D animation for stylistic reasons. So to make this look more like an anime, I use the style, of course changing a lot in the process. And now the fourth sketch. Okay, right now it's just a structure so yeah, I'm gonna put in the final features. Alright, so after finishing the sketch, I went to pick the colors and then, uh, you may have noticed that the drawing is too small to ink without it ending up looking really bad. But the sketch is too light, so if I just colored it like that, the lines would disappear. So I would have to redo the lines, but they wouldn't look the same as before. So instead of working the hard way, I decided to work the smart way. As someone once said, if there's a problem, turn it into a feature. And no, this doesn't mean I'll just leave it looking bad and call it a day. I have a plan, but first I have to take a picture of it. You know when you don't have an idea of how to finish a drawing, so you just keep delaying and delaying it even more? I'm not gonna lie, that's exactly what happened here. All the other drawings are done, and a decent part of the video also done. This was a sketch I first started with for this video, and it's gonna be the last one I finish. I had an idea in mind, using this artwork as my main inspiration, my goal was to make a colorful background that then makes a solid white sketch pop out, but I didn't know how to make that work. Calling back to the start of this video, I'm just like, what do I put in here? 
So during this time I kept sketching whatever in this page, trying to find something that could work. Until I made this using some older anime as reference. After this I was like, hell yeah, I know exactly what to do now. Spoiler, I didn't. As you can see in this time lapse, with every time I take my hand off the page I slowly realized that this wasn't gonna work. So I went back to these drawings which I was happy with and started thinking about why I liked them. Because there was no pressure sketching them. The outcome felt more lively and that often gets lost in the final art. So I started working my way from there, thinking of a way to embrace that in the end result. My main worry was that while trying to make it colorful, it would end up confusing. What helped me combat this was dividing each part of this illustration and using different color palettes and photo references for each. That way it's colorful but not chaotic. And now, here it is. If you liked what you saw, I'm sure you'd love to continue discovering content like this. You can start by clicking this video because there's a lot more on my channel around my art process that can inspire and help you in your